Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this is Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Today, we welcome to the show new cat. Hendricks, and she is with Danny and Ron's Rescue Organization. She's the executive director, and Danny and Ron's Rescue was founded by Danny Robershaw and Don Danta, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. Danny and Ron's Rescue speaks for helpless animals that have no voice. They began this rescue mission in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina hit by aiding dogs that were left homeless by the storm. Since then, their outreach has grown to heights that they never imagined, and today they are rescuing puppy mill dogs, bait dogs used in dog fighting, and hundreds of dogs from shelters, often moments away from euthanasia. Danny and Ron's Rescue is unlike any other rescue organization. They have turned their own house into the ultimate safe haven for these abused and abandoned pets, and they personally care for them until they are ready for adoption. Each dog is treated like a part of the family. They're fed organic dog food from their bowl and even allowed to sleep in their bed. The dogs are given the opportunity to live with humans and other dogs in a real home environment, which is the best way to prepare a dog for adoption and a life with a loving family. They're proud to be one of the only organizations that does not charge a preset adoption fee and instead relies on an affordable donation by the adopter. So welcome to the show, Nukat. We're happy to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Patty. It's an honor to be here to represent the Danny and Ron's Rescue. Oh, good. Um, so why don't you tell us, how did Danny and Ron get started with their rescue? Um, well, as you mentioned, Danny and Ron, when they realized that there were dogs left behind, homeless, struggling on the streets after Katrina, Hurricane Katrina hit, they decided that they were going to do something about it. And literally, they took their vehicles and went down and start rescuing these dogs you know, the, with the only intention, of course, to care for them and start adopting them. They did not even imagine that they were going to start a rescue. But, of course, being animal lovers, and um, it became a heart mission. I don't know if you know, but Danny, our founders, Danny and Ron, are well known in the horse world. Um, they train, they serve and uh, serve as judges and committee members for the U.S. Hunter Hunt, Jumper Association and the U.S. Equestrian Federation. So they were very widely known in the um, equestrian world. And then all of a sudden they tapped into that resource to see if they can start some adoptions. And all of a sudden it became a, um, expected Don and uh, um, Danny and Ron will show up with dogs and they will adapt. So that's how they started. Imagine this was in 2005. They are still around, and to date, they have adopted 11,000 dogs, and they are we are still going. Wow, that's a lot. That's wonderful. So, yeah, yeah. having having the equestrian um, background or connections or community, I guess, makes for a, yeah. a, wonder, a wonderful um, group of people to be able to um, adopt from, or to, I should say. So where exactly <laughs> is Danny and Ron's located? Well, right now we have a place what we call the dog house. That's the big house. That's the private house of Danny and Ron, and that is located in Camden, South Carolina. Majority of our animals are there. They live in this big, beautiful home and with people loving and care for them and waiting for the perfect you know, family to come and find them. So that's one location. But because of their equestrian ties, they are in Wellington, Florida, from December till the end of March because of the Winter Equestrian Festival. And they use this time not only to do their training and horse showing, but also showcase these beautiful animals in a beautiful booth for um, people coming to these shows to see. And as a matter of fact, it started today. Our team is at the show. Our, you know, our dogs are there. And I know before the week is over, we are going to adopt at least five to ten dogs, if not more. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I did yeah. see that they had a, a Florida location. That's where I am, and I was curious about that. <laughs> yeah, so, we're in yeah. Florida, are you? Oh, we're down by Sarasota by Anna Maria Island. That's awesome. Yeah, we are yeah. in Wellington. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what what exactly does Danny and Ron's Rescue do? Obviously, they 
are um, involved, it's you mentioned with the puppy mills and bait dogs. And so are they on, you know, well, what do I want to say? So they're probably uh, connected with local law enforcement or something like that, that they're able to contact them to help out with different situations. Is that how they obtain these dogs? Um, generally, it is through the shelters or word of mouth because mm-hmm. now they are known. So they are very involved in the local shelters within South Carolina. Um, and then sometimes they do get phone calls from people who are wanting to um, release their dogs or surrender their dogs. Or they get at the news, um, you know, word of mouth or law enforcement or the veterinary clinic or another shelter or even a friend that there are animals that need to be rescued. Or even other rescue organizations reach out to uh, Danny and Ron to see if they can help. So not only are they rescuing, but they are, I mean, they are, and we are as an organization very passionate about spay and neutering because mm-hmm. the only way we are going to overcome the overpopulation of animals is spay and rescue. So not only do they spay and re- uh, neuter their own animals, they have helped others uh, by paying their vet fees to do so. The mm-hmm. plans are being worked out to create a spay and neuter program and they have gotten involved to stop, you know, dog fighting. Puppy Mills is another thing that, as an organization and founders, Danny and Ren would like to see gone. Because, as you know and I know, Puppy Mills exist only because people keep buying. And right. if we stop buying, you know, maybe we can that we can stop the Puppy Mills situation. Right, right. And there are times... There are times they rescue animals at the brink of death because of injuries and everybody has given up on them. Danny and Ron takes it on. And uh, we have a couple of them actually recovered and now living in beautiful homes. Just These are just recent um, examples. So um, besides the community support of the spay and neuter, I noticed on the webpage that there were a couple other things that Danny and Ron um, does to help the community. Could you tell us a little about that? The, of course, I'm going to start. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm gonna... <laughs> no, that's okay. Should I continue? Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll do that. So I'll start with the very recent one. Um, Danny and Ron believes in supporting the community that we are in. We need to give back because we are fortunate to be given this mission to work. And right now, the last, um, the last one that I personally got to participate because I'm quite new with the organization is that Danny and Ron presented a check for $10,000 to Palm Beach County uh, Meals on Wheels program for their Any Meal program. That's for the pets of the elderly and shut-in and disabled who really are in need of um, care for their pets. They did not want these people to have to make a choice to eat or to buy dog food or share their meal that is delivered to them with their animals because they don't have money to buy dog food. So that's just one of the many things that they um, help people out. And they have about 48 elderly and disabled people living in poverty that they are helping every day with food, veterinary care and supplies, pay for um, medical bills. Um, work with the veterans to help them with their pet needs. So, you know, in, within their community as much as they can, where they can, within their um, abilities. So they are there doing as much as they can and giving back all the time. Yeah, that's really, that is unique for a rescue to be rescuing back, basically. That's what yeah. they're, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, very that's unique true. in that sense. Yeah, because you don't, I mean, that is not something you hear about every day, that a rescue organization is actually doing their own work besides that. That's really nice. So um, talk about the dogs. I I watched the documentary, and I know we're going to talk about that a little bit, and I was very interested in in seeing how the dogs live day to day. It it is, you know, the in the documentary, there were a lot of dogs. How many dogs? <laughs> at, <laughs> how many dogs at one time live in the doghouse? Well, currently there are about sixty of them. And oh, having wow. been personally at the yeah, having been in the uh, dog uh, doghouse as we call it, it is an 
incredible setup. It is an amazing setup. Every part of the home has been beautifully divided, you know, the bigger dogs and the smaller dogs and dogs who get along with each other, dogs who, you know, um, who needs to be quarantined because of their health issues, who needs quiet, and then also dogs who sleep with them every night, you know, in their bed. Um, but they have, you know, created a system that allows them to do what they are doing. They are very organized. The, everything is um, labeled. Everything is systematically uh, created. How do they take care of the dogs? Which dog gets first? Who gets their food? Who goes out? They have parcels, parts, uh, portions of their um, yard. Certain dogs go this place. Certain go, you know, dogs go to the other. The veterinary care is always available. I could not believe how incredibly well-oiled machine that operation is when I first went there. It is, there's a um, shelter manager who is there. There's always someone in the house at night. Those dogs are never left alone if uh, Ron and Danny is traveling. Otherwise, they are on site, hands on. And um, there are people also coming, taking them out for walks, playing with them, training them. Even though you may think that if you walk into a home, it should be smelling like dogs because there are 63 of them, but they are so attentive to the products that they use that is beneficial to the animals, not harmful, but at the same time keeps everything clean. The dogs are, you know, washed just about every day, if not every day. So it eliminates the odor that you would think that would be in the house. It is an incredible setup. When they say the dogs are here living in a home, in a home environment, they mean it. I've seen it. I'm a witness of it. Um, it is, and hence the reason I so wanted to work with them. And I'm fortunate enough to do so. So it, they have a great setup there. Yeah. I, I Talk about the uh, documentary Life in the Dog House because I, I would love the listeners to be able to watch it. I did watch um, off of the, your webpage. I looked at it and it was really neat. <laughs> it is an incredible documentary. It truly tells the story how this um, um, rescue started, but most importantly, the story of Danny and Ron. And once you listen to that um, or watch the movie, you know why it was inevitable that they would eventually be doing what they are doing. Um, the documentary is produced by the director is Ron Davis, who is a documentary um, director, and he was an adopter. And that's, you know, from, again, um, ties in the equestrian world. And um, it was a, you know, product of um, love and heart. And it took about a couple of years, I believe. And then it was released in certain areas of the country and then a nationwide release on Netflix in June. And ever since they have become um, household names, so to speak, everybody knows Ron, everybody knows Denny. And um, so the impact of the work that they are doing has also quadrupled now more people are reaching out asking for help. So we are all trying to accommodate all that. Um, I would really recommend if someone is a dog lover, I really, really would recommend to watch the movie. You are not just going to see how these animals are lovingly rescued, but the two men behind the masterminds and with an incredible heart that make this happen. So the name of the movie is Life in the Dog House. It's on Netflix. It's on Amazon, iTunes, and um, a couple other places, um, Hallmark Channel even. So, yeah, it's a great, yeah. great 90 minutes. It's just a whole heart. It's all heart. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I loved uh, what I saw when I looked at that piece that's on your webpage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted yeah. to adopt a dog from, from the rescue, uh, how would they go about that? Well, um, as you can imagine, because we, I mean, we, we do have guidelines and adoption process, um, just like any other rescue. Um